Hey, Doombots, Tony Scangili here with another episode of The Middle Ground, where I look at the most recent blog post with any controversy in it. Take the good, take the bad, try to find the middle ground. So, March 13th, the most recent blog post had a lot to say, and I think that there's plenty of good inside of it, but there's a lot of either tone deaf or just downright awful stuff. And I just wanted to go over it and take a quick look. So first and foremost, uh, Red Skull was officially announced and will be probably made available soon or is available at the time this video goes live. Uh, his kit has been released. Phenomenal. Uh, this is a, a great feature uh, to let us see all of the character information before they come out so we can get a good understanding and that's what a lot of the content creators are using those videos for so seeing it here uh, definitely helps players who don't watch people on YouTube like me uh, uh, talk about character kits and where they're going to be used uh, without giving opinions as to whether or not this is going uh, to be helpful in one way or another like they did with the Wakandans which didn't pan out so just seeing a kit with an understanding of what they do and how they work should be enough for everybody and this is a great addition. They also mention two upcoming blitzes, the next blob blitz as well as a four leaf blitz which does tie in with the St. Patrick's Day event. Great. Uh, any notification prior to an event uh, is miles ahead of what they had usually been doing on their blog which is telling us what happened during the week. I don't need last week tonight with John Oliver. I need to know what to look forward to in the weeks and months to come. Additionally, they've clarified that they will be adding Villains Chapter 7, most likely during the week of March 15th. Uh, and they've included not only which nodes have what in them, but what the requirements per node will be. So according to this notification, uh, the Superior Basic Catalysts are on Villain 7-3. Acceptable. Uh, Hella will be added to Villain 7-6, which is phenomenal, as we need to farm her. And as the Asgardians and Black Bolt are an end game team. Having them placed so late in the game is not as terrible. They don't really shine in the early game anyway. So by the time you can accomplish the tasks in villains, it it makes sense that you'd be rewarded with a high impact character like Hela. And then the strangest one is rescue going to villain seven nine. Now the good news is. Rescue is now target farmable in the game, as opposed to previously where Rescue was in Blitz Orbs and you had to get lucky, and I use that word very loosely, in order to get uh, access shards for Rescue. So if you don't have a Rescue right now, or if you uh, are working towards uh, starring up your Rescue, you have to open Blitz Orbs, which for a lot of players are less impactful than target farming the specific character they want in Blitz at this point. And even in the early game when you tend to be opening Blitz orbs all the time because the RNG and the gold is worth a little bit more than paying 500 for five specific character shards, Rescue always felt kind of like a downer. The power armor is not a very good early game team. So I'm not sure where I stand on that. But when you look at what the requirements for the nodes are, you get a little bit of a better understanding. So the first three missions are Sinister, Hydra, Sinister 6, Hydra, or AIM. AIM's rework came, took place about three or four months ago. Sinister 6 have been out for about nine months, give or take. And the uh, Hydra rework just took place. So just getting past the first stages should be no issue to any player who's been clamoring for the next stages of the the campaign nodes the more content we've been asking for uh, but it is a, a hard stop for progression in a lot of cases for a long time once you hit around level 60 level 65 you had already full cleared the villains and the heroes campaign and with the most recent change to heroes as well as this one in villains it, it it kind of feels like those campaign chapters are designed to be very much like challenges achieved later, almost like a rite of passage as you've accomplished certain tasks, you can then go back. So I understand that 
a lot of the characters that are going to be required to farm both on the heroes and the villains are are not characters that a lot of players maybe have invested that much in, especially when it comes to missions one, three, where it's sinister six, Hydra or aim and even missions four, six, which is mystic as you have to use mystic villains. And there are a little bit less mystic villains than there are overall mystic characters. So you can't directly overlap with your mystic uh, campaign run. I understand that that's a little bit unfortunate, but again, since these are meant or kind of designed to be end game content, I guess, or or the you know once you've entered the end game farmable content, I, I get it. it. It also kind of builds in its own progression. I don't like to be told how to progress, and I don't think a lot of people do, but I understand that some things are supposed to be gated behind time and that's a concept we're going to get into as we go into the next stage uh, other than that villain seven nine just or just requiring villains for the last three nodes or so it's fine but i you know i get it it's um it, it the hardest part was getting through it and then it should be in theory easier to close out very similar to i believe the heroes event where some people may have been able to beat the city version but it's unlikely many players have invested that heavily in their defenders by the time this campaign has gone live so the uh, later stages the cosmic there are way more successful hero cosmic characters than there are city hero characters so you know i i'd understand that it's a little bit easier to get to the end of the heroes campaign once you've passed a certain point, I personally know a lot of people who have three starred the Colossus node, but have maybe one or two starred the Black Widow node. It, it, I, I understand. Uh, it doesn't feel great, but I understand what they're trying to do. And the last note is the Infinity Gauntlet form of Thanos. I don't have anything negative to say about this. I don't think anyone could. They're taking an existing character and making him better, almost probably somewhat in line with how Captain Marvel's binary works, if I had to guess, wink, uh, where the presence of the additional characters in the Black Order will change him in some way, probably on spawn. I don't think they would change if happened in the middle or due to an action someone takes, but no possible way you can look at this in a negative, right? It's just a change. The positive silver lining on this is because they're making a change to a high impact character, it's more likely that Thanos will become farmable in one way or another. He will be moved from just premium orbs to either a node farm or a store that's very not only possible but probable considering the fact that many people are not going to be incentivized behind Thanos and the reason Thanos and Minerva were in those scarce situations is because they were part of one of the best teams in the game the BKT at the time and those characters would definitely have generated them more money by being scarcer you don't have to like it I don't like it but I understand why they did it for the same reason they put Sif in the war store Sif is the worst member of the Asgardians and therefore most likely to be purchased in lieu of farming in a very difficult store. So I do understand from a business perspective why they did it, but I think that it still is a business first and not players first decision to put a character in the war store with the war store's current economy. Last, we have Ebony Maw. Now, I know the temperature on this is is pretty cold i i understand why the first you know what we'll go straight good bad and ugly the good it is march 13th when this went live when this blog post went up they're discussing a legendary event scheduled for mid-may so this event is roughly two months or this notification for this event is two months ahead which in theory, is is a lot of leeway, a lot of headspace, a lot of time to prepare. I think that's good, right? Good. This is the kind of communication that I know I personally have been asking for. Don't like give us roadmaps, give us information. Don't spring stuff on us and make us have to panic farm. So we're sticking on good. Sorry, I really have stuff to say. So I like the the foresight that this shows. The the fact that we know two months in advance, what's happening. I like the idea 
that uh, Ebony Maw is a legendary character that is going to be necessary to take an existing character that a lot of players have access to or have unlocked at this point. Maybe not farmable. We already said he probably will be farmable soon. But uh, take another thing. I like when they take the previous characters like they did with Supernatural or even AIM and they, they kind of throw things up a little bit. I like what they did with the Marauders by saying, hey, we could use a new version of the team because it leads to growth and change in a, in a good way. So I'm cool with the idea of Ebony Maw being a legendary and I'm cool with the fact that they were able to give us two months head notice as to when he's going to come out and even more importantly, what he's going to need. The bad, uh, and there is a lot. The first is that he is the first legendary to require and I'm using this word, require another legendary. Now, if you've played games similar to this before, you knew the writing on the wall was that this would always happen. This was always going to be a thing. That said, it doesn't make it feel good. Just because you know something bad is coming and can prepare for it does not mean it, it's better. It just means it happens. I understand that it's possible that a character unlock or a legendary unlock pool starts becoming more difficult the longer the game goes on. For example, look at Phoenix. Phoenix was five random characters that didn't quite make any sense to be combined uh, at five star, according to all the content we were provided by Fox Next. And then we moved to the official announcement where she became a six star unlock. That didn't feel good. On the other side, we had Invisible Woman, who we, we had, I believe, 45 days between the announcement of her event and the farmability of the Sinister Six characters and her official unlock, which I believe Invisible Woman was the highest first pass unlock in the game from Legendaries, because not only did the people who were already buying new characters because they're part of a team get them, the whales, but a lot of players were able to target farm because they had the information ahead of time. And I think that a lot of that soured when we saw Black Bull, we had the, the foreknowledge, or at least if you've been watching my stream, uh, the foreknowledge that the Asgardians were going to be used to unlock Black Bull, but that knowledge only matters for as long as it's actionable, as long as you can work on the characters. Now, you could, of course, prepare for blitzes, go hard on campaigns, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but I know personally I had to spend... About 150 US dollars to unlock Black Bolt, and that was with blitzing and farming the campaign and doing my best. So I, I had to spend quite a bit to unlock him. So I do understand that that was a very, I don't want to even say free to play, unfriendly aspect because I don't inherently believe legendary characters are a right, especially for a player who's not spending. But I do believe that the second pass of every legendary character should be for everybody. That said, it sounds a little tone deaf. It sounds like it almost sounds like specifically Black Bull and four other Inhumans is worse than had they just picked five different legendaries that may have been in the game already. Uh, and I know that sounds crazy, right? But if they had just off the top, if they had said Nick Fury, Star Lord, Magneto, Shuri, and Invisible Woman were required to unlock him, like that full team. I feel like more people would would have access to that character. Whether you'd be mad about it or not, I don't. It feels off. It feels a little tone deaf. It feels crazy. The Like I said, the good news is you have enough time. And the truth is, if you got Black Bolt on his first pass, or if you're going to get him on second pass, you're probably also going to get Ebony Maw, depending on when they release the rest of the Inhumans. Reason being, Quake and Ms. Marvel are two of the four possible options that you can use. Uh, one of the other characters, Crystal, was a campaign character, which most players who've been playing the game to the point where they are in the end game, end game being, you know, you've unlocked a good portion of the legendaries, possibly even Ultron, you're at about three to four million TCP. You, you probably won't have to stretch too far to get uh, an inhuman team, not including Black Bolt, to the uh, point where you can unlock Ebony Maw. So that, that's a good thing. 
Ebony mod feels like it's a kind of gift to longtime players in the game. I can say personally that I will spend exactly zero dollars to unlock Ebony Maw this pass. Yes, I concede that I've already spent money to unlock Black Bolt, but if I hadn't, I definitely would be able to unlock him this pass with the way they've already set everything up. So I definitely would have had a five star Black Bolt right now on his most recent pass, which should be coming in April. And I would, of course, then have a five star Ebony Maw as a result. Uh, so I get it, but I know personally that I haven't spent much money since the Black Bolt event or any really, and I'm going to get functionally a free Ebony Maw. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that to say a lot of us, a lot of the players who've been playing for two years plus also have the same situation. A lot of us are going to get Ebony Maw for little to no money. And that feels good from being an endgame player perspective because I don't have to go out and buy a brand new team to get the next legendary because they've given me so much time and I can look at my characters and go, oh, they're four star or OK, I can maybe work a little bit towards farming, whatever. Or if you are willing to spend, you can see an offer now if you see an offer for Sif or for any of the Asgardians or for any of the Inhumans, you now know that that offer is going to be used towards an unlock. So I, I get it. I think that Ebony Maw is kind of tone deaf. I think that requiring a team legendary first as opposed to like Magneto, who could in theory be unlocked with Phoenix or uh, Iron Man could in theory be unlocked with Nick Fury. I get it options are always better than rec like required versus recommended you know what i mean that said i think it's still a little tone deaf and i think that the positive of them giving us three months notice that it's going to happen doesn't necessarily detract from the the terrible feeling of not being able right now to work on any of the characters uh outside of of course unlocking Black Bolt. Uh, the only other notice on this that that's kind of worth talking about is the Fantastic Four bonus event. For 24 hours, you will get to enjoy two times Mr. Fantastic character shards. I, no opinion at all on this. Uh, phenomenal if you need Mr. Fantastic. I do not have a maxed out Mr. Fantastic, so great. I will farm his node and get double shards. It feels a I, I don't want to be critical of something that is just present, like it doesn't matter. But I will say that I do like the idea of having double drops on things that aren't just farm nodes. I like the idea of, of moving double drops to, say, I don't know, Human Torch in the Arena Store or Namor in the Raid Store. This way... One, if you happen to get lucky and you decide or are target farming that character, you may be able to purchase one, two or three over the 24 hour period of time, doubling what you would normally get instead of 15 shards, you'd get 30 shards. I like that idea. I also like the idea of if you're willing to spend either cores where you have a bank of cores as a free to play or, you know, cash spender, you can definitely refresh the stores during those times and make a huge difference in the same way that you would refresh a node to get more farmability. So I, I no critic, not being critical, just kind of saying I wish that in the future when they do have an event double drop, they incorporate stores uh, to help a lot of the players. If you don't know, I've recently started a free to play account and I'm starting to see some positives and some negatives. I understand that gamma, alpha, and beta orbs, as well as the milestone orb are, and that new legacy orb that they seem to be giving out. Those are great assets to new players, but they're still RNG, and a little bit of RNG is good, a moderate amount of RNG is acceptable, but I've always had a personal opinion that stages of RNG uh, or tiered RNG, like a roll of a roll, if you understand what I'm saying, are, are terrible, which is why I don't like things like red stars. Anyway, there there's nothing else really to talk about here. We obviously had our good, we have our bad, and the middle ground is that Foxnex does seem to be improving. They seem to be getting better at communication. 
better at, at, at telling players uh, very relevant information that they need. I think the problem is that when they make the decision, the end of the decision, what Ebony Maw being unlocked with Inhumans featuring Black Bolt, that is a decision that no amount of, of notice could have changed. Perhaps had they said to players November that Black Bolt would be used to unlock a future legendary, that may have made a change, but I don't think that makes too much of a difference. I think Black Bolt event was handled terribly. I think the character's farmability for this next Black Bolt event in April is going to be as terse. Uh, some players may be getting him. A lot of players still won't because of the short period of time and how characters are farmable. And then because the next legendary is tied behind him, it doesn't feel great. So the middle ground for all of the good, they're still kind of missing the mark. I look forward to the future where they kind of square up. Now, they are business. They're trying to make money. But I don't think that it's a successful business model to make money by being predatory. So hopefully, while that does feel less predatory in nature, it still feels a little bit like they're trying to get people to spend money in lieu of actually playing the game as opposed to spend money uh, in addition to playing the game. And that's something I will always advocate against. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, comment below. Let me know how you feel about any of the stuff in this blog content, whether you care about Thanos, whether you care about Hela being placed in the node. Obviously, there's a lot of opinions and a lot of people I know are not happy about the Black Bolt event and I'm not happy about the Ebony Maw event. But let me know how you feel about it. You know, maybe you have some different opinion. Maybe you think it's the best event they've ever done. I already said I don't have a problem with it, but I understand that that's because of not only my monetary investment in this game, but my time investment in this game. At, a two, at two years, I've been playing this game long enough to know like I, I'm getting my value out of it, and that's why Ebony Maw is so easy for me to unlock. But I understand that I'm in a very small group of people. So let me know what you think. Have a good night. Have a great day. Uh, I've been Tony Scangilli, and I'll catch you later.